Welcome to Television Sydney News. I'm Gemma Seymour. It's great to have you with us. In this week's bulletin, police wear white to raise awareness of domestic violence, vandalism leads to calls for a laneway closure and Featherdale welcomes two cassowary chicks. But first, police were continuing to hunt yesterday for three men who drove a car into a Granville fruit store and set it alight on Monday night. Emergency services were called to the ABFM store on Good Street at about 10.50pm and found a car on fire in the store. There was speculation the fire could be related to a feud between rival bikey gangs. Rose Hill Inspector George Radmore said police will canvass several lines of inquiry. Police have reopened an investigation into a sexual assault that occurred more than 13 years ago in Parramatta. New forensic evidence has allegedly linked a man to the assault that happened in O'Connell Street in 1998. Acting Inspector William Percival said a database had matched a recently collected DNA sample with those collected during the original investigations. Liverpool police officers donned white ribbons and took to the streets on Wednesday to raise awareness about domestic violence against women. Kelly Wilson, a domestic violence liaison officer at Liverpool Police, said women experiencing any type of violence should report it to the police immediately. Yeah, what they need to do is first is to keep themselves safe, so if it's an urgent issue they need to call triple O. Um, if it's not so urgent and they've got a chance to get out without, without the perpetrator or the other person that's putting the violence on them, is to come to the police station and make a report to the police and they need to do it as soon as the violence has happened. And it's not only physical violence, it could be psychological violence, emotional, financial, so it's not always just with punching and assaulting. Senior Constable Wilson said the high rate of domestic violence in Western Sydney made it more important to speak to the local community. We've had 500 reports of domestic violence in the last 12 months at Liverpool alone and there's been roughly around 430 reports of domestic violence assaults uh, reported to police in the region, in our western region, in the last month alone. The campaign for White Ribbon Day will end on December 10. A man driving a white van approached three boys in St Clair on Tuesday and police are appealing for witnesses. Police say the boys, two aged 11 and one aged 12, were walking along Denver Road at about 3.30pm when the van pulled up near them and the driver asked if they wanted a lift home. When the boys ignored him, he yelled at them and drove away. The man was described as having short brown hair and wearing a fluorescent safety style polo shirt. Anyone with information should contact contact Crime Stoppers. Vandalism of an unfinished block of new houses has renewed calls to close a laneway in Blackett. Ron Bright, the chairman of the Blackett, Emerton and Derrick Residence Action Group, said graffiti on the Boulderwood Road complex made his blood boil. He urged the community to report vandalism to police. Blacktown councillor Charlie Lowells is lobbying for the laneway to be closed. The council spends $800,000 a year getting rid of graffiti. Expressions of interest have opened for the redevelopment of the Aird's Bradbury housing estate near Campbelltown. Finance Minister Greg Pearce and Community Services Minister Prue Goward visited Aird's on Wednesday to announce that the project would be the biggest social housing public-private partnership in the state's history. Local resident Jen Rignold said it's important the community's views about the changes are heard. Bottom line is we're battlers. We make do with what we've got. And I want to thank all the dignitaries that have come today. This is a big event for us because it's an opportunity for us as residents to say to you, this is our community. This is our heart and soul. This is our home. And we have put a lot into making this happen. The government is seeking applications for a private partner to come on board with the development, which will take place over the next 15 to 30 years. Bargo residents are relieved the fight to stop a waste transfer station from being built has ended after the applicant abandoned his Land and Environment Court appeal. Wallandilly Council rejected the $2 million plan in July, but the applicant had lodged a court challenge to the decision. Bargo man Robert Jozecki said the waste station did not suit the area and would have ruined a lot of lives. 
The Hoxton Park Residents Action Group said it's been boosted in its fight against Liverpool Council's approval for the building of an Islamic school. Last week, the action group was granted leave to appeal the constitutional validity of Commonwealth legislation providing funding of the Australian Federation of Islamic Councils and the Malek Fad Islamic School. The case will return to the Supreme Court for further determination. A Cogra Council decision to adopt a flood map that will strip millions from property values has outraged residents in the Poulton Park area. Almost 600 properties will be listed as a possible flood risk after a report commissioned by the Council modelled modelled what could happen if a serious 1 in 100 year flood were to occur. Residents say their land should not be shackled to warnings that their houses could be affected by an unlikely flood. Rockdale Council has defended itself against criticism from residents who say streets and parks are not being kept clean. Rockdale Council Operations Manager Colin Clissold said staff make daily collections from shopping centre bins and empty park bins twice a day on weekends. The council issued 108 fines for littering between November last year and October this year. Mr Clissold says all individuals have a responsibility to help keep streets litter free. One of Sydney's last remaining specialist motoring and military bookstores is struggling to ensure the store's chapter doesn't end. The owner of Battlebridge Military Books in Parramatta, John Miller, says the economy, online sales and an ageing market are forcing specialist stores to close. The well-known bookshop has been on Church Street for three decades, but Mr Miller says sales have dropped in the past three years. There's been one in the city, a military bookshop called Napoleon's. It's been going at least 30 years. That was the only other military bookshop. It's closed this year. Uh, there was one at Cremorne, a motoring bookshop, closed probably six or seven years ago. There was another one down south and another one in the city that's uh, really just doing online now. So all the specialist motoring and car bookshops have essentially gone and I'm the only one left here in Sydney. He says bookstores will be forced to diversify the range of products they sell in order to survive. People have got to adapt and maybe put other things in their shops. Maybe books won't be enough to survive on. You'll have to look at doing other things and that's what I've done. I've got models and kits and other things as well, DVDs. But even that market may die off. Melinda Cruz, the founder of organisation Miracle Babies, has been named the 2011 Australian Ernst & Young Social Entrepreneur of the Year. The Preston's mother of three started Miracle Babies in 2005 after having two premature babies. Now a national organisation, Miracle Babies raises around $1 million each year from donations. Mrs Cruz received $100,000 for her charity for winning the award. And now to sport, a crowd of more than 10,000 is expected at Cogra's Jubilee Oval tomorrow when the Sydney FC takes on the Brisbane Roar. Sydney midfielder Nikki Carl says the Sky Blues are determined to stop the Roar's history making unbeaten run. It will be the first A-League match played at Cogra and the first time the ground has had top flight football on it since the Sydney Olympic used it as their home base in 2003. Castle Hill Bowling Club member Debbie Howard has been picked for the state squad after impressing selectors in a tournament at Maryland's Bowling Club. She competed against 24 women from around New South Wales. The state squad will compete in two interstate competition events at the Australian Sides Tournament in April and then the Ashes Series against Queensland in June. The Sydney Blue Sox have signed two American imports in a desperate bid to improve their season fortunes and get off the bottom of the competition ladder. American infielder Joe Hage and AAA outfielder Brendan Barnes will join the Blue Sox for several games against the Brisbane Bandits at the Blacktown Interna International Sports Park on the weekend. The Blue Sox hope to banish a three-series losing streak. And finally, Feathertail Wildlife Park in Western Sydney is home to a number of youngsters at the moment, including two very cute cassowary chicks. But they won't stay that way for long. Adult birds adopt an aggressive nature and prefer a solitary lifestyle. And breeding is no easy task, with the adults having to be introduced in the morning and separated every afternoon during mating season, in case they turn hostile toward one another. But Featherdell has successfully hatched chicks for the past five years. We're one of a few institutions that breed cassowaries successfully, and uh, it's pretty important because they are vulnerable in the wild. 
Um, numbers are low, especially after natural disasters like the cyclones in the north. And uh, hopefully one day this, these guys will be part of a program to reintroduce into the wild. For now, the chicks are like any other young, each with their own personality. So this one here, he's a bit more feral, he likes to run around and he's a bit more of a bully, whereas the little one tends to be a bit more dopey and more relaxed. But um, this one here seems more keen to peck first and ask questions later. The chicks will be moved on to other wildlife parks as part of the managed breeding program. And that's all the news we have time for today. For more information on any of these stories, visit tbs.org.au or pick up your local Fairfax newspaper. I'll see you next time.